On the map over here, this is the intersection for all the conflict in the Middle East. Keep in mind, Iran is over here to the east. This is Outpost 22, right at the confluence of Jordan and Syria and Iraq. There are several American outposts in this part of the desert. They have significant jobs to keep a lid on ISIS uh, and try and prevent Iran from using Iraq and these channels of communication, these channels of supply into Lebanon for uh, Hezbollah and into Damascus for the Syrian war there. Also, there's concerns about the West Bank and supplying through Jordan. This is what their duty and responsibilities have been. In this particular location, 350 forces here, at least 34 injured, three dead, eight evacuated, said to be in stable condition. We hope the best for their recovery. On the satellite image over here, this is Tower 22 from the air. This is all desert. You can make the argument it's in the middle of nowhere, but it's in the middle of everywhere now with concerns for uh, the Middle East. As Jennifer just reported, this was a pre-dawn attack, okay? A pre-dawn attack that was designed to inflict mass, uh, the most amount of casualties to the personnel who were housed in that military barracks. As of today, Going back to October 17th, these are all the hits that have been carried out against American forces stationed in western Iraq and eastern Syria on behalf of these Iranian proxies. What to do now? General Jack Keane joins our discussion. And General, good morning to you. Reading through all this this morning and over the weekend, General, does Iran want war? No, Iran doesn't want war with the United States, but Iran's strategic objectives is what they're really about here. And that clearly is they want to dominate and control the Middle East, drive the United States out of the Middle East to be able to accomplish that, and weaken Israel politically to the point where people don't want to live there anymore. That's what they're about here. These proxies that we're talking about, I mean, the administration has got to wake up. They're saying, well, we don't want to expand into a regional conflict. The regional conflict is here. I mean, Hezbollah is conducting daily attacks into northern Israel and displaced 80,000 Israelis in northern Israel. Hezbollah is an Iranian proxy. Houthis, the Houthis have cut the traffic through the Suez Canal by over 50 percent, impacting the global supply economy. Houthis, Iranian-backed proxy. 160 attacks bill, you just laid it out, in Iraq and Syria by proxies that were organized by Iran, and just like every other proxy, they arm them, they train them, and they fund them. The war has been already expanded. What we're trying to do is stop this expansion, and the administration doesn't get it. They've got to reset their strategy comprehensively here, Bill. Organize the international community to isolate Iran. The appeasement diplomatic strategy failed. Number two, economically, go after everything they can in terms of maximum sanctions. And go after the Chinese who are buying Iran's fuel. And guess what? They are flush with money as a result of it. Sanction the Chinese if we need to. And then militarily, we have to deal with this issue here of shutting down Iran's backing for these proxies. They don't care how many rockets and missiles are destroyed or how many proxies are killed as a result of our strikes. What they do care about is the resources that they own. I would go after the IRGC targets because they control and direct, fund and arm, and it's a military target, bases and people and leaders. And also, as part of the comprehensive strategy, it goes unspoken here, but Iran is close to a nuclear weapon, and we've got to have a strategy to deal with that reality in concert with the Israelis. Reset comprehensive strategy to deal with Iran. A military strike here is very appropriate, and it has to have the right target in mind so that we can Iran will finally begin to shut down these proxies. Sir, President Biden in January, January 15th, so about two weeks ago, said this when he was asked off the ca uh, on camera, but it was like not in a formal address about Iran. I've already delivered the message to Iran. They know not to do anything. So he says, I told them not to do anything. They know not to do anything. President Biden's statement last night is that America's heart is heavy. He ends it by saying that we know it was carried out by radical Iran-backed militant groups operating in Syria and Iraq. Uh, what do you think they will do? I mean, 
at least call together the National Security Council, I imagine. But there are increasing calls from Capitol Hill to actually do something, strike. Um, and I don't know if the Biden administration is going to do that. There's a lot of consequences involved in that decision. Yeah, well, I'm, I'm very frustrated. Our hearts go out to the loss of life here, certainly, uh, for the three, three troopers that we've lost and their families and friends and also the two SEALs. But we've been predicting this would actually happen because we haven't had a strong enough response to shut this down sooner. That's what's so shameful about all of this. We don't take strong action until Americans get killed. We should have taken the strong action to prevent the Americans from being killed. That's what's so bothersome here. I mean, the administration has got to find some spine here and recognize full up that they nothing's going to stop until they take something away from the Iranians that they truly value. And believe me, it's not the fighters, rockets and missiles that their proxies own. It's what they own. And we've seen the evidence of that. Reagan did it in the late 80s when he went after the IRGC bases and capabilities. Trump did it in... <clears throat> in 2020 when he went after um, the major leader of the IRGC. We should do both, mm. leaders and bases wow. of the IRGC. Well, that, that's the question, General. And, um, and you had two Navy SEALs who were dead. You had troops who were injured two weeks ago. We hit a leader in Baghdad, so we know where they are. Uh, we hit him with a drone moving east of Baghdad. Mitch McConnell said, hit inside of Iran. Uh, hit him hard was his quote. Lindsey Graham said, you have to go inside of Iran, and you just said it, too. And the other thing you said is you got to hit the right target. What's the right target? Well, I think it's their capability. They don't want to lose their IRGC capability, and, and that's their bases and also their leaders. Uh, there are other targets that are available, certainly, and, and CENTCOM will have maybe more color on it than I got on it. And, but it has to be something that's decisive, and it has to be something that clearly the Iranians value. They don't care about their fighters out there, their proxy fighters, and their rockets and missiles. They're going to ship them more rockets and missiles, and they're radicalized, these groups out there, and they're going to get more fighters to take the place of the ones that get killed. That's the reality of what we're facing here. And we've got to step up and have a much better strategy overall dealing with this. It's yeah. not just the military issue. It's diplomatic as well as economic. And we've got the wrong strategy right now. Well, Jack Keane, thank you for your time. Analysis on this Monday morning. Thank you. Much appreciated. Thank you. I'm Steve Ducey. I'm Brian Kilmeade. And I'm Ainsley Earhart. And click here to subscribe to the Fox News YouTube page to catch our hottest interviews and most compelling analysis.